The prophet Jeremiah has a particularly rough vocation. Uh, all prophets had a rough vocation, I suppose, uh, in that, uh, as we've mentioned before, if a prophet goes to a city or an area and preaches repentance and people do repent and because they repent, the tragedy isn't brought upon them, then how are they to know that it was because they repented that the tragedy was averted? How could they not just say, well, maybe the tragedy was never going to come? Maybe you just made it up. Maybe we just sat in sackcloth and ashes for no good reason at all. And then if, they, if you as a prophet preach to a group of people and they don't repent and then the invasion happens or whatever it may be, people will say, well, why didn't, you, why didn't you convince us? Why didn't you use more convincing arguments? Why didn't you come earlier? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? Either way, you lose. Okay, so a prophet, absolutely uh, awful vocation, a very, very, very difficult vocation. Uh, and as I was thinking today about the, the reading from the prophet Jeremiah today, uh, it struck me how this can actually take place on a much smaller scale within families, okay, where if you're a practicing mom, dad, granny, granddad, uh, you might have the faith, live the faith, appreciate the faith, love the Lord, and really desire that others do the same. Really desire that your sons, that your daughters, your grandchildren, that they follow. Okay, obviously it's an understandable desire. Anything that's good, we want our kids to have that and more. You know, like when maybe school might have been a bit difficult for us, we want them to have the best schooling possible. Maybe we didn't get the chance to go to university because we had to go work or whatever it was, go abroad. Uh, for, for, for work because there wasn't any in Ireland uh, we want our kids to have best third level education that they can have we didn't have indoor plumbing it was hard in the 90s and uh, you know and we want our kids to have yeah we used to think it was amazing to have a, a, a phone in your room that was ooh uh, whereas now they have the phone with them constantly won't get off the stupid things um, so we want the kids to have more, we want the kids to have better than we do. So if we appreciate the faith, we also want our kids to have the faith, right? Because why? Because everything else is going to pass. Everything else will pass. The pool that you paid for, the Spanish holiday that you gave them, all those things will pass. They're gone, and eternal life is the only thing that, that lasts anyway. So obviously we want our kids to have the best. We want the next generation to have the faith. We want them to know the Lord. We want them to get to heaven. Okay? And we shouldn't take these kind of things for granted. We shouldn't. Right? It's, 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 it's exceptionally unwise to take heaven for granted. Like we wouldn't take anything else we consider important for granted. You wouldn't say, well, I mean, they don't really need to go to school. At the end of the day, you know, life will teach them. So we let them learn in their own little way. Uh, you know, as, uh, as they'll pick things up. Really, is, is, that, is that how it's going to happen? Ash the faith. You know, I mean, they'll They'll work it all out. They'll kind of they'll pick it up as they go along. Will they though? Will they? And if they don't, if if they don't pick it up, what happens then? Like if if they don't know the Lord, don't avail of His grace, don't know His mercy, don't avail of His sacraments, and everything, all of the the, the graces through the the myriad of of avenues, sacraments and sacramentals that the Lord has has prepared for us. If we don't avail of any of that. Is it so taken for granted that we're, that we're going to get there? Is it? That's quite the chance to take for something so important. So, we want to pass on the faith to the next generation, and this is a good thing. It's good that we have this desire. It's good that we have, I love, I think it's a really, really important word for the church at the moment, urgency. It's good that we have this sense of urgency. It's urgent that I do now what I can do to pass on the faith. Don't leave it till the end of my life. Don't leave it until, don't leave it for the teachers. Don't leave it for the catechists. Do what I can do now. Okay, so it's, it's a good idea. It's a good, this is a, a, a good thing to do for, for ourselves and for our families. Okay, Prophet Jeremiah, he's, he has to go preach to the people here in Jerusalem. Uh, this, <clears throat> this chosen people in, in, in this holy city, which houses the Holy of Holies, right? The temple and the Holy of Holies. It's like this place reserved for God, the only one in the world. And even they won't stay faithful to the Lord. The, all of the, 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 the uh, abuses of the law and superficiality and all of that that went on there, Jeremiah has to, has to call it to the fore. Okay, now he's not, again, God isn't being unreasonable here. Even the reading today starts with, listen to my voice. I mean, think of God pleading with us, mere little puny ants as we are. 
in comparison to him. And then God is saying, listen to my voice. Shema Israel. You know, beautiful expression like, listen Israel, listen to my voice. Then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Like this, this is what we're playing for. Right? Do you want this? It's like it's so simple. It's just laid out in front of us. Listen to my voice, which obviously does, doesn't just mean hear me. I mean, I can hear someone that I completely disagree with. I can hear someone I don't even like. Okay? Hearing someone is not listening. Okay? You can hear someone and not really care what they say at all. But listen is, is much, much deeper. I, 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 I hear audibly what they say, and I take it into my heart. I, I live it. Dare I say, I obey. So it's not just know a few things about our faith or know the Ten Commandments. Live them. Listen, O Israel. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Follow right to the end the way that I mark out for you. And you will prosper. Now, prosperity, which we're kind of careful with that word here, uh, there's a, a such thing as what's known as the, the prosperity gospel, that if we do what God asks, the Lord will bless us here on earth also with wealth. Now, that's partially true uh, in that we can see in Western society, which lives with, with Christian morals, Christian beliefs, Christian understanding, Christian sense of, of right and wrong, it does make the people prosper because we, we should have an eye on the common good, not just my own personal good. We have a sense of justice, even like uh, much of our civil law comes from what was church law, canon law. So if we live this way, the society will prosper because we're, everyone is trying to work hard for the good of their families and for the good of society. So when people work hard and people are honest and people pay their taxes, I mean, it does help society. So on one hand, the prosperity gospel isn't entirely false. What we have to avoid is that if, if if we is the thought that if we follow God, we'll be rich. That's that's just too simple. It doesn't really work that way. You'll be rich in the things that are that that are important, right? Yes, you'll have, have internal riches and maybe maybe external riches as well. But the most important are the internal ones. So just to clarify that. Okay, but this is the point I wanted to make. So the, the reading goes on, and then the Lord reveals to Jeremiah. You may say all these words to them. They will not listen to you. They will not listen to you. You may call them. They will not answer. So Jeremiah has a vocation to speak to the people here in Jerusalem knowing that they won't listen. That's tough. That is tough. Imagine. Now imagine your family. Imagine your little son or daughter who's now 26 and has their third level education and is so incredibly smart that they don't need the rosary and they don't need mass and they don't need all of them fandangle pictures that you have on the wall when your living room looks like a sanctuary uh, or a, 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 a trinket shop in, 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 in Knock uh, with your divine mercy and the two hearts and the, the blessed sacrament and <laughs> the whole lot and the, uh, Archangel Michael over the door and Padre Pio and you know the whole lot. Okay, so it can be then that our, your sons and daughters don't, don't practice anymore. And you can kind of say as often as you want, lads, you know, you should be praying the all rose or you should be going to mass, you know. But I, I know things are a bit difficult, different now, but you, you get the point. I mean, uh, this, this hasn't just happened over the last 12 months, but beforehand also. Lads, are, are you going to mass on the weekends? Ah, ma'am, come on. Janie, no need for that like, I mean. I work on the weekends or, you know, Saturday's my only night off, so I, uh, I go out like, so I'm not going to make it, you know, and so on and so forth. You know, you know the story better than I do. Uh, and you can remind them over and over again of, of the importance that God should have in their lives, right? The, the importance of their soul, the importance of eternity. But they will not listen, right? And it's, it, this is a difficult thing. This is a difficult um, role, vocation. It's a difficult position to be in. There's hope, by the way, so just so you know, we're, we're, there's hope at the end. We're, we'll get to the hope in a second. Uh, when we think of two situations, two Bible stories, I think it's very interesting to see how one person can stand for 
others, right? So because of the sin of Adam and Eve, all of humanity falls. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus, all of humanity is saved. Or at least all of humanity is offered the grace of salvation. Okay? So there's more going on here than each individual being entirely isolated and receiving grace for themselves, trying to live a virtuous life for, the, for their own salvation and end of story, you know. We can actually represent other people, which is, it, it's an interesting idea. It, it, it was always the case, like the, the, the scapegoat uh, back in the Old Testament, which would represent the sins, of, the, the sins of Israel would be laid upon him and the scapegoat would be cast off into the, into the wilderness. So, like, something that stands for, that represents a group of people has always been the case in, uh, in, in, in our tradition uh, back from Jewish times. But if you look at Noah, for example, it says in scripture very clearly, Noah was a just man, blameless among the people of his time. A man who walked with God. Lovely expression. A man who walked with God. This is uh, Genesis 6. So this is the story of Noah. Noah was a just man, blameless among his people, a man who walked with God. Now, Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the earth was desperately corrupt and so on and so forth. It doesn't say his sons were just. And a little later we can see that it doesn't look like they were, right? But Noah was. But because of Noah, his family is saved. Because of Noah's justice, his family gets into the ark. The ark in traditional uh, theological terms is, is this great ship navigating its way towards heaven is, is the church. Right? So the ark represents the church. But it's because of, of Noah's justice, Noah's righteousness before God that his family is saved. And uh, you know the, the story of uh, the soldier, the Roman soldier, uh, when there's an earthquake which frees uh, Paul and Silas from the prison. So they're, they're in the prison, there's an earthquake, right? the, the gates burst open. The Roman soldier is standing there going, if the prisoners escape, it's my head. So he takes out a sword, he's about to end his own life, and Paul says, don't, 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 we're still here. And you can imagine the soldier going, why, why are you still here when the gates are open? But with great humility and openness, the soldier asks, what must I do to be saved? This is Acts 16. What must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. They then spoke the word of God to him and to all his household. At that very hour of the night, the jailer took them, washed their wounds, and he and his whole household were baptized. He and his whole household. Acts 16, if you want to look it up afterwards. So we see these, these situations where because of the, the goodness, the righteousness, the, the prayerfulness, the openness of one person, others benefit, their families benefit. And I believe that can still be the case today. Which isn't to say, of course, that our sons and daughters don't have to practice and that you know, our, our faith will get them, get them in, they don't have to do anything. But I think we should believe, we should believe in the power of our prayer, the power of our intercession, and the power and necessity of our faith for others. So if I, as, as a mom, I'm sitting there at home knowing that my various sons and daughters, wherever they may be, aren't practicing, keep praying, keep hoping, keep loving, love the Lord in their name. Adore him in their name. Pray to him in their name and entrust them to the mercy of God. And we keep going. We just, we, we keep going. We don't give up. We keep going. If this worked for Noah, if this worked for the Roman soldier, the help of God, it'll work for us. So there's always hope. There's always hope in the Lord. We're dealing with a merciful God here. We're dealing with, with the Lord who thinks we're worth dying on a cross for. He wants their salvation more than you do. So we, we entrust them to him. We're not their savior. So we thank the good Lord for the gift of our faith and for his 
constant calling out to us, his constant calling out to them to win us back, to win us for him, and to win us for heaven. Amen.